So did they ever offer you a plea deal? Was there ever something you can cop to to not receive this life sentence? Uh, no, I never, I never got a, a I never got a plea. They was first degree intentional homicide all the way. If I wasn't gonna uh, take, they asked me a plea was offered to me, plea to life, and we'll offer you parole in um, 13, 15, 18, 20 years or something like that. But it would be up to the judge's discretion. Okay, so you take this thing to trial. Mm -hmm. How long is your trial? My trial was like maybe two days. Two, excuse me? My trial was maybe two, three days. Wow. Three days tops. Okay. Do you have money set aside for a lawyer or are you using a state lawyer? Well, at the time um, I started out, I had some cars. I had a couple cars. I had a couple material items and a few dollars saved up that I was able to piece together and get a lawyer. So the first lawyer, I got, I spent maybe 10 to $15, $15,000 of my own money that I had got together as far as selling cars and selling the material items that I had to pay for it. But when he got there, he told me that uh, I should take the plea for life. And I was like, man, well, what I give you my $15,000 for? I could have did that for free. Exactly. So by this time, the day after the incident happened, my mom came and seen me. And my mom uh, was asking me what happened. And I was telling her, I, I didn't want to explain it to her because I had given up. I said, man, I, I, mom, I messed up. I messed up, mom, I wasn't trying to do it, but I messed up. So she was like, boy, just tell me what happened. I need to know what happened. So, you know, this mom talking. So I start to explain to her what happened. And she was like, yeah, you messed up, but you need to fight. That's what my mom told me. Um, she said, yeah, you messed up, but you need to fight. And I was like, why well, I'm going to fight? She was like, because what they charging you with, you did not do. You did something, and you probably going to do some time, but them charges is not right. So I don't know nothing about jail. I don't know nothing about charges. So she just told me, just fight. So after that, when that lawyer told me that uh, to take the plea, I was like, well, you know, kind of my mom told me I got to fight. So you telling me to take a plea. And by then, I had read the law books that they had available to us in the county jail. And I kind of pinpointed what I did. And I, I kind of looked at it as if, okay, I was defending somebody, but I might have overdid it. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at myself and I'm trying to look at, once again, yes, I heard somebody, I heard a family, I took a life. And I'm going to prison. I'm going to prison, but my mom told me to fight. I'm going to fight. So once I researched and I seen it and I started to gain some sense of what was going on, because once again, I was in a fog. I was in a daze. And the more research I did, the more conversations I had, the more I said, you know what? I got to fight. I got to fight. So I began to say, you know what? I'm going to take this to trial. I'm not going to take a plea. And you know, I went to trial, um, my mom was there, everybody was there. And after two, three days of trial, man, I ended up being found guilty of first degree reckless homicide. So the jury found me guilty of a lesser included offense of first degree intentional homicide. So you had first degree intentional, second degree intentional, and then you start with first degree reckless, which would be labeled manslaughter in other uh, states. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was found guilty of, uh, first degree reckless homicide, a maximum of 40 years. What was your minimum? Uh, he could have gave me no time for a minimum. It's zero to 40. So I went to sentencing a couple months later, and the judge maxed me out. He gave me all 40 years. Okay. You just get hit with a 40-year sentence. You're yes, doing sir. state time, correct? Excuse me? You're doing state time, correct? Yes, I'm doing state time. Okay. Help me to understand what goes through the mind, because I know you're struggling, you took a life. I also know it's gotta be exhausting going through this trial, 
sitting there. You don't know what the outcome is. I'm in a fog. I'm fighting for my life, knowing damn well I took a life. Mm -hmm. And then you get hit with this sentence. Is it relief at this point? Because finally I can, for lack of a better way to put it, start my life. Or is it, I'm looking at 40 years. Like, like what, what, what is going through your mind when they slap that gavel down and say, you're found guilty, first degree reckless homicide, and you got 40 years? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you all over the place. Um, okay, first of all, you got some little thing in your mind saying, man, I ain't got life, I got another chance. And then you got another voice in your head saying, man, you got 40 years. Man, you ain't going nowhere no time soon. So you got all of these voices with different things going on. And at some point, at some point you getting, you getting, oh man, uh, excitement. Then in the five minutes later, you getting sadness. Then five minutes later, you getting a warrior. And then five minutes after that, you getting deep depression. So you getting all of these different emotions and different feelings, man, and you got like, Man, I gotta get a grip, man. This is this is playing with everything inside of me, you know. So that's that's something that initially started me when I got to prison. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.